I remember the bombing, the killing, families was torn apart. The impact was huge, especially for the kids. 28 million children have been displaced, just like me. How is it possible to 50% of the children between age of 6 and 14 can't go to school? It's crazy. This has to change, and I want to make this change. Mashe, yalla. Today, I stand up for myself and for all of these kids. I will fight for the rights of these kids. I'll try to be their voice and their hope. Because every child has the right to education, to develop, to dream big, and to enjoy life. <laughs> my name is Mohammed. I'm 16 years old, and this is my story. Sixteen years ago, this little boy was born in Syria, Mohammed. He had a very good childhood, full of love, family and happiness. A carefree youth, like every child deserves. My family lives in Syria, in my hometown as well. It was like normal life. My dad had a job, my mother had a job as well. We bought a house, a car, a different shops for my father. I was just focusing on my school and my friends and having fun all the time. So yeah, life was good. But Mohammed's life changed. With the Syrian revolution, a war started, and it came closer and closer to his hometown. One time I was sitting at my house with my family, and it was the first uh, big bombing happened in my hometown. We saw like a fire all like close to, 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 to our neighborhood, all, all over the place. We heard people yelling from, from the closed buildings. I felt like this is what war means. Mohammed's parents were active in the revolution against the regime. His mother was arrested and detained twice. After this, the family received a letter. The same people that arrested her sent her a message that uh, you have two choices, to stay and get, and get killed or to flee Syria. Then we knew that they want to kill my mother and we had to flee Syria and leave everything and disappear. After a long journey, the family arrived in Lebanon, near the big city Beirut. Mohammed's parents couldn't find work in Lebanon, and soon they had no money left. Therefore, Mohammed's father decided to seek asylum in Sweden. Again, I lost something pressure in my life. I lost first my home, my friends, my life, and then I lost my father, my life with him. So things started to disappear, like, one by one. No one asks me, for example, when we want to eat, what do we want to eat? Bye. 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 The morning comes to me and tells me, for example, when do you want to get out of your work? When do you want to get out of your work? These are small things that I have to do, but I don't want to give you time. I don't want to let you feel like I'm always like that. That's it. As many of the refugee children in Lebanon, Mohammed couldn't go to school for the first two years. But he never lost his will to help others more desperate than himself. Being a refugee, a refugee child in, in a different country, it's the, the difficult thing because you're starting your whole life from the zero. So you don't have friends, you don't have school, you don't have anything to do, you don't have a house. It was a struggle. But rather than defeat him, it fueled his will to fight for a better future for himself and for other children. So Mohammed went to the refugee camps to help the children there. Mohammed creates opportunities for them to interact with other children. He helps them to make new friends, to adjust to their new situation, and to lead lives as normal as possible. He had this like beautiful smile, and he was just playing and trying to make them feel happy. Together with his family, Mohammed started a school for Syrian children in a camp. And what started in a tent is now a real school building staffed with formal teachers and 200 children. For me, every 
child has the right to learn, and has the right to be educated, and the right to go to school. So for me, this is what I'm fighting for, kids being in schools, getting educated. At the age of 12, Mohammed himself is teaching maths and English to the children. He also teaches his biggest passion, photography. He encourages children to take photos of their daily lives. You know, there's a lot of refugees, kids who's, who are too shy to talk, but not too shy to take a picture. So the picture can, can tell a hundred words. A picture of hope, a picture of happiness, also a picture of a better future. بدي ارجع مثلا صحيح والله انه نحن نزحنا وبدنا نكبر باخر شيء ونصير مناح بالمستقبل يعني شغلات منيحه هسه انا بدي ارجع العالم انه نحن بنعيش اللحظه كيف المدرسه اليوم؟ مدرسه شو؟ يعني هو ما تعلمها من حدا هو بيعملها لانه طالعه من جواته يعني طالع شيء من جواته This is what he does This is this is what what he wants to do in his life the most thing that makes me feel satisfied and happy is also being with the kids. Because being with the kids, playing with them, having fun with them will make me feel like I have something, I have them, and they gave me power. Thanks to Mohammed, many refugee children in Lebanon can go to school and have a future again. Oh yeah? And that is why Mohammed is the rightful winner of the International Children's Peace Prize 2017.